Warnings of a border surge be damned. President Biden is plowing full speed ahead with the end of the Title 42 just four days from now. Even most Republicans and Democrats warn it will unleash a tidal wave of migrants. Border apprehensions hitting a new record in April with 234,000 migrant encounters. Ron DeSantis thinks the Mexican uh, drug cartels should be awarding Joe Biden. Biden should be given an honorary membership in the Mexican drug cartels because nobody has done more to help the cartels than Biden with his open border policies. And so so it's a total disaster. Uh, it's been a disaster, I fear, with Title 42. If they do repeal it, uh, I think things are fixing to get even worse. And the head of DHS is finally admitting that ending Title 42 will bring a migrant surge to border towns. We recognize that with the end of Title 42, there very well may be an increased surge in migration, and we have to equip them with the resources and capabilities to address that increase as well. Katie, I want to go to you. So I'm conflicted on this. I, I understand why people are advocating, especially people in Congress that don't like to be blamed or take responsibility mm -hmm. for things, are advocating to keep Title 42. But if the nature of Title 42 is truly about coronavirus and public health, I mean, I don't think you should be using a Band-Aid to fix a tourniquet problem as yeah. a guy who's needed tourniquets before. <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about this? Well, I don't want to talk about tourniquets because I'll pass out if I keep talking <laughs> about that. But uh, I agree with you in the sense that t if they're going to say that Title 42 is a public health measure, then the president has other tools within the Department of Homeland Security and the executive branch to stop this problem. They're throwing their hands up and acting like, well, a judge says that we have to take for Title 42 off and therefore we have no other options. That's not true. Uh, but this administration has taken the stance that they have turned you know, ICE into a transportation agency. They've turned Border Patrol into a processing agency. And they have absolutely emboldened cartels. They're making $100 million a week, a week, just on human smuggling alone. We just had uh, overdoses, more than 100,000 Amer 100, Americans last year. That's a direct result of this problem. And it's not that these people are just going to border towns as if that's somehow acceptable. They're getting flown on the taxpayer dime by the federal government to cities and towns all across the country. And they're essentially, the administration is, you know, finishing the last leg of the trafficking or smuggling process. And I've been saying that for years. It's clear they don't want to change it. They're not going to change it. And Americans will suffer as a result. Dana, uh, do you think if we built a wall, we would, we would have a handle on this? It, well, I, not completely. Yeah. I think it could help, right? But I think... It, it, Walls work in many places, and unfortunately, uh, the Biden administration has said not to do it. Anymore. Here's my perspective on this. From my understanding, Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump were working on a deal that would allow for DACA. It, I think it was going to reform visas or double or triple yes. visas. Yes. Donald Trump offered her the majority of what Democrats asked for in exchange for the wall. If the Democrats' biggest argument is a wall don't work, the wall don't work. Well, I am from Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> if, if their biggest argument is a wall doesn't work, what's the risk in letting Trump have the wall? in that deal from, what, four years ago, and where would we be today? Well, because, Joey, you know, that there, I long believed that they would rather have a problem to basically do politics off of than to solve it. And I think that the wall, I guess, to some of their, uh, their left-wing base was just so offensive they couldn't possibly do it. Jesse, it was just about not letting Trump have a win, wasn't it? It was. And it was also about getting the migrants into the country at a certain point where it's not politically suicidal. They don't mind the waves. They just don't like it when it hurts their poll numbers. Yeah. And it's going to hurt their poll numbers so badly when you see these images because the mainstream media is going to have to cover this. They can't hide. You're going to see these harrowing images, hear these horrible stories, and you're going to get reports from these border towns of these cities being overwhelmed. And at a, at a time when the country's already overwhelmed with gas prices and inflation, you can't just surge a quarter million new people a month into these small municipalities. It's just not physically possible to do that. And so you get rid of Title 42. They just broke the record in April. Almost a quarter million illegal border crossers. They repelled about 90,000 over Title 42. Now those 90,000 get to stay. So they're not going to be kicking anybody out of the country, a quarter million a month for as long as possible. And then since they're not doing any deportations, you're basically getting a million illegal aliens into the country every four months, unchecked, 
with no plan to do anything about it. And Jessica, like I haven't touched on fentanyl because I think that's a different issue and it's worthy of its, of its own segment. We're talking about immigration broadly. Not only have the numbers hit record highs, but you know what's going down? Families and kids. And you know what's going up? Single males. So there, it seems like the writing's pretty easy to read on the wall. Why, the Democrats really think Republicans just don't want brown people here? I mean, obviously there's a lot more to it than that. Obviously there's a lot more to it than that. And some Democrats think that they just don't want brown people here. And when people are talking about, you know, that everyone who's coming over, it's MS-13 and blah, blah, that's how you get to that point where you're having the discussion. Russians but Dana, are coming over. And Ukrainians. Russians, are, part of the Brazilians, problem is also, you, everyone's here. <laughs> Part of the problem is that this crisis is going on while the Ukrainian crisis is going on, and we do want to make sure the country feels very comfortable with Ukrainian refugees coming over here, and that's muddying up the issue. But to Dana's point, every administration has a border problem, and Republicans and Democrats both don't want to s solve this. We've had gang of eight bills that have been wildly popular. I mean, Democrats Trump, have supported border walls. Well. He didn't I mean, he put made together an a coalition. Platform. He he certainly did build the wall, bad hombres. I heard all of it, and <laughs> he didn't put together a coalition that was going to be able to get this done. The Gang of Eight did do that, and the fact is, is that yeah. every single person in a position of power, politically speaking, benefits in some way from undocumented labor. And they go to states like Florida, they go up to Oregon, they pick grapes in, uh, in wine season, picking oranges, whatever it is, and taking a lot of the jobs that Americans do not want to do for wages that Americans will not stand for. And we all at this table agree that by and large, people who are here, and yes, they crossed illegally, are good people who want to pay into the system if they're afforded that opportunity, and right. many of them are. Well, I, listen, I grew up in a town of 78% Hispanic inside the city limit. There are a lot of really good people that want to be here, but they're not served coming here and living in the shadows. Yes. And that's the problem. And you're right. Both parties so benefit from So create a pathway to citizenship for them and let them come out of the shadows. All right. Well, that's your that's your that's solution. That's my solution. There you go. All right. <laughs> Up next, Elon Musk ready to ride the big red wave as the billionaire bashes Democrats. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.